It's time for the Longines Chronicle, a television journal of the important issues of the hour. Brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. A presentation of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company. Author of Longines, the world's most honored watch. And Whitnor, distinguished companion to the world honored watch. Good evening, this is Frank Knight. Introduce our co-editors for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope. From the CBS News staff, Larry Lasser and Bill Shadell. Our distinguished guest for this evening is George Strauss, chairman of the Fair Campaign Practice. A long time ago, as far back as that, anyway, there was hope throughout the country that the campaigns would be conducted on a basis of fair play without personal vilification and abuse. In fact, a committee was formed which our guests like heads. They got pledges from the candidates, I understand, that they would ad adhere to a conduct. Now, Mrs. Strauss, what has happened to those pledges of fair play, of honesty, decency? I think we had a very large uh, percentage sign those pledges, considering it the first time that this happened. And uh, up till just recently, they did very well in living up. In other words, uh, you think that there haven't been too many violations? Well, if there were any violations, which side do you think they were on? Well, there have been too many because I wouldn't like any violations at all. But uh, that kind of mudslinging uh, is not uh, wise. And I think come election day that the voters will think. Well, in other words, you feel that it's possible that these uh, violations boomerang on a candidate? Well, I do indeed. I have real faith in, um, in the people in this country. I don't think they like that kind of uh, mud. And I think that they show it in their vote. Well, I think they have in the past. I have a real belief that uh, most people have higher standards, and this is a way of uh, giving them an opportunity of, of expressing what they want. They never sat down uh, and drew them up themselves. Is, uh, uh, pr this code that our committee has presented, I think, put in what a lot of people have wanted and had in mind. Strauss, is there any way of policing these, this code? No, when the committee decided to uh, make this code available, we decided that we could not police it, but that we would leave it up to the press, radio, and TV, TV, and to the people themselves for policing. And I think that that in our is, is the right way of doing it. Well, Mr. Strauss, do you acknowledge that there have been violations of the code of honesty and uh, fair play? And now, would you pinpoint the blame at the, at the candidates or on the national leadership? Well, I don't think there's any one place uh, it comes from. I think that um, many people can contribute to it. and. Uh, I think that it often is a move of desperation. I think that's why there's been more of it at the end of the campaign. I think the fact that uh, some of these things that have been said at the very end, when there really wasn't time to prove whether they were so or not. And I think that's the kind of thing that the, the voters uh, will learn to recognize if they haven't already and realize that, that kind of attack is not a justified one and they don't want it to do it. And on election day, they'll make it known. Mr. Krauss, when you have a chance to evaluate this campaign at another such campaign, uh, your own fair practices. Well, we hope to. We You're not discouraged? Oh, we're not discouraged a bit, and we hope that the editors will help us evaluate. We have a questionnaire we want to send out uh, to the editors, asking them what they uh, think about it, and asking suggestions how it might be made more effective uh, you, other years. Mr. Strauss, is it possible that the public themselves are uh, guilty of uh, violating your pledges by exaggerated bias, by uh, indulging in what have been called whispering campaigns? which is not due to the candidates or the national leadership. Well, I think generally that the, it was started by somebody who was deeply involved in a campaign. You think there is an initiating force in, in any of these campaigns of vilification and personal abuse, even whispering campaigns? Oh, I think that there is the original force, and then I think that it is often uh, taken up uh, by the people, but I don't think very often the people themselves have, have started it going. And... Uh, 
I think that the, fortunately, the press and the people and others contribute towards it. But again, I think if we call it to their attention and, and uh, show them how it's to their own disadvantage to have that kind of a thing happen, that uh, a large majority of the people will not do it. I think it's an awfully small number who do the name calling and who like that kind of thing. And I think those of us who don't have to get up and say we don't and say it un in no uncertain terms. And that's why what this Fair Campaign Practices Committee is trying to do. Ms. Strauss, would there be any, uh, uh, would it be practical to try and get some federal legislation or perhaps a resolution passed by the Congress endorsing this code? Yes, actually that was what was originally thought of when the um, subcommittee drew up uh, what it was basically the same uh, code that we are using, the uh, subcommittee on privileges and elections. But they didn't put it into legislation and so uh, we, just a group of citizens, picked it up and said let's do it by the force of public opinion. To my mind, I rather like it when public opinion does something. Uh, and uh, just speaks up and says, we want the best of our candidates and uh, we'll demand it of them. Mr. Jones, now, is the raising of false and misleading issues one of the dynamics of uh, uh, politics or can politics be conducted on purely intellectual lines? I think it can be done on um, intellectual, if you want, or, or the facts of the situation because I think this name calling and mudslinging uh, gets away from the real issues. And to my mind, you can do a wonderful educational job in, po in politics uh, during a campaign and uh, give the people a real basis for making honest decisions. As a practical politician, can you appeal to the people uh, through their minds or through their emotions? Isn't it necessary to go to their emotions in order to get them to vote? Yes, but we have good emotions as well as bad, and I'd appeal to the good emotions when, uh, when you're making the emotional appeal. I think it's a combination of intellectual and emotional, but uh, let's have it on the, the higher emotional appeal and not the baser ones. In other words, you think you can make intellectual or, uh, or uh, mental issues into emotional ones by good, is that good politics? I think we've got to make it good politics, and I think it is increasingly good politics, We just yes. stated before that, uh, that uh, some of the candidates were guilty of uh, introducing issues that could not be proved against their opponents at the very tail end of the, of the campaign. Well, isn't that good politics if, uh, if they go into the election day without being, the other side being able to disprove the charges that are made against them? No, I ho hope it's going to be, sh be shown that it's very bad politics because I hope that the people will recognize uh, that it is name-calling and that if those were real suspicions, they should have been brought out earlier. Does your committee have any plans for trying to evaluate a candidate losing because of unfair practices? Well, uh, we shall do it for our own satisfaction to see the effectiveness of it, but uh, we, as a committee, are not doing ev any evaluating that um, we would make public as to whether a, ca a candidate had lived up to it or not. That would uh, put us on the spot. It would be a pretty good lesson, though, wouldn't it, for some politician? Yes, it would. We hope that the, the people themselves, the voters on Election Day, are going to do that type of evaluation for us. And that's much better to give the... Uh, majority that opportunity instead of just a small committee. Well, Mr. Strauss, speaking of evaluation, do you think there should be a limit on how far back an opponent goes in uh, using uh, facts which are not, or issues which are not related to the issues of the moment to smear an opponent? Well, I think Should there be a time limit? Uh, no, I think that pertinent um, facts should be brought out, but um, I don't think there's a time limit on pertinent ones, but I think that the, the uh, crux of the situation is what is permanent, uh, pertinent. Well, why haven't, if I may ask Mrs. Strauss, Mrs. Strauss, why haven't women uh, done more to clean up politics? After all, that was one of the uh, reasons they gave for getting the franchise when they first got uh, women's suffrage. And since there are more women than men, why haven't they done more to, uh, to wipe out, by the force of their vote, these candidates who, who violate the pledges of uh, fair play and decency? That's one of the reasons that was given for giving women the vote. Actually, I'll go back to my own great-grandmother, who uh, was one of the first people to work for the vote, and uh, her basis, she was a very strong uh, uh, anti-slavery person was that women have a contribution to make and the vote is the crux of being able to make it and uh, 
I will say that I do think that women do have uh, somewhat m higher moral standards uh, that can be applied, but after all, you know the old story, if women were uh, all angels, the men would have a very dull life. And I think that, that uh, the people that thought that the whole political scene was going to be made over just because women were given the vote uh, were being rather unrealistic at that point. Do you feel that our campaigns have cleaned up, uh, been cleaned up in the last 20 years? Oh, I do. I think that they um, are on a better plane, but not as good as they should be. Well, Mr. Trost, do you think, actually, uh, you've seen a few campaigns, I suppose. Yes, do you think that few. election <laughs> campaigns are getting better or worse? I think they're getting better. Is it the present campaign that has taken place in the past few days? No, what I'm saying is I think that there is more honesty in campaigns now than there used to be. And uh, I'm not pleased until they're entirely cleaned up, until uh, this uh, Code of Fair campaign practice is, enti is entirely lived up to. But uh, I think this is just another step that will help improve them. In other words, do you think the force of public opinion as harnessed by the women in the League of Voters and this, this uh, committee of, uh, of for fair play is gaining more and more power in the, in the actual elections? Yes, I think it is. I think that, uh, well, we know that there's a very considerable um, number of independent voters and uh, even within the party, independent. And that's a whole subject in itself, how strict, uh, how much you should uh, vote as a party matter. But I think this degree of independence means that people are thinking uh, on the, their own and making their own decisions. And I think that kind of um, decisions uh, will mean that the party will have to work with higher standards, just as I think the League of Women Voters uh, trains people to go into their party and be more than yes men to really make a contribution of, of higher standards uh, to both political parties. Thank you very much, Mr. Strauss. It's always a pleasure to have a woman of your high principles come before our cameras. The opinions expressed on the Longines Chronoscope were those of the speakers. The editorial board for this edition of the Longines Chronoscope was Larry Lasseur and Bill Shadell. Our distinguished guest was Anna Lord Strauss, chairman of the Fair Campaign Practices Committee. How many of the things that you own will be serving you 10 years from today? Probably not your present car, almost surely not your present television set. Well, now, just think of this, that barring accident or abuse, the Longines watch which you buy and give this Christmas will be actually better than new at this time in 1964. There is, of course, a reason for this. For almost a century, Longines has been acknowledged as just about the finest watch made anywhere in the world. Of all the world's fine watches, only Longines watches have been honored with 10 World's Fair Grand Prizes. 28 gold medals, so many honors for accuracy in fields of precise timing. Yes, the Longines watch which you give this Christmas will be a treasured memento for years to come. Consulted daily with confidence, for greater accuracy is a traditional Longines quality. And every Longines watch is designed as a Stein leader. And yet you may buy and proudly give the Longines watch this Christmas for as little as seventy-one fifty. And may we suggest that if you pay the price of a Longines, insist on getting a Longines, the world's most honored watch, the world's most honored Christmas gift, premier product of the Longines Whitnor Watch Company, since 1866, maker of watches of the highest character. This is Frank Knight reminding you that Longines and Whitnor watches are sold and serviced from coast to coast by more than 4,000 leading jewelers who proudly display this emblem, Agency for Longines Whitnor Watches.